we discussed that we are all tiny parts of god who is an ocean of bliss hence we have the inherent urge to be blissful and we cannot rest contented until we get such bliss which is infinite in extent which is ever fresh and once attained it will never be snatched away from us that is the sat chit anand of god that bliss will be attained when we attain god himself in order to attain god we will have to go beyond the purview of our senses mind and intellect because he is divine beyond the material realm and hence we must not harbor this vanity that by our intellectual analysis we'll be able to fathom god he is only known when he bestows his grace and grants to the soul his divine intellect on receiving god's power any fortunate soul can see him hear him reach him think of him know him and attain him however god's grace is not a whimsical act from his sight we will need to do something to attract his mercy what will we need to do we discussed his eternal law he graces those who surrender to him yesterday we discussed that it is the mind which needs to be surrendered for the mind is the cause of bondage and the mind is the cause of liberation our mind is presently attached to the world if we are aspiring to attain god realization we must deeply contemplate how to detach the mind from the world and we discussed this will require us to understand that the happiness of our soul is not in material objects when the intellect holds this discrimination this vivek it will then develop the power to pull the mind away from the world just like you pull your mind away from a cup of poison even though it is very tasteful for you know it has the ability to kill you hence shri krishna said in the bhagavad gita जन्म मृत्यु जरा व्याधि दुख दोषानुदर्शनम अर्जुन रिपीटेडली थिंक ऑफ द डिफेक्ट्स ऑफ दिस वर्ल्ड इट्स मिजरीज एंड टॉर्मेंट्स योर माइंड विल देन कम अवे फ्रॉम इट बट द माइंड कमिंग अवे इज ओनली हाफ द स्टोरी द सेकंड हाफ इज हाउ नाउ to attach this mind to god this requires practice just like in the material realm you mastered so many skills whether you became a graduate a post graduate whether you became a painter a dancer a writer whatever required focused and repeated practice similarly if you wish to move ahead in your spiritual practice the first step will be to assign some time from your daily schedule for your personal sadhana so we need to take out some time every day how much time should we take out swami ji according to the vedas one tenth of your time is prescribed for sadhana one tenth means roughly 2 hours that is the prescribed time 
Now, two hours seems impossible in the modern scenario. At least take out one hour. Make a firm resolve from today onwards. Whatever happens, I will definitely allot this one hour for my own soul. Now, what do you do in this one hour or two hours? What is the sadhana that is to be done? Navadha Bhakti is very popular. The ninefold processes of devotion. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atma, Nivedanam. This was stated by Prahlad Maharaj in the Srimad Bhagavad Mahapurant. Seventh Canto, fifth chapter, twenty-third verse. And it was highlighted by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Bhajanayar Shresh Navadha Bhakti. Tar Madhya Sarva Shresh Nam Sankirtan. And Mahaprabhu Vallabhacharya also highlighted. So all the Bhakti Acharya started highlighting, hence Navadha Bhakti became extremely popular. Now, you can do any of these ninefold processes of devotion. Worshipping the Lord in His deity form, offering prayers, chanting His names, serving, etc., etc. Shramadam Kirtanam, etc. So you do any of these ninefold processes of devotion, but one of these nine is compulsory. Without that one, it is all one big zero. What is that one? Smaranam. Smaranam means remembrance. Because ultimately the mind needs to be purified. So in your sadhana, you have to take your mind to God. So how do we do smaranam? How do we remember God? That is what Jagat Guru Sri Kripaluji Maharaj always emphasized. He said, do Rupa Dhyan. What is Rupa Dhyan? Bring the image of God before you. Now the mind will have a basis to rest upon. Like for example, you remember somebody in the world, Are bhai, where is that person? Who? That one who's come from Fort Worth. So many have come from Fort Worth. That tall guy, see he's brought his image to mind. The tall person. Tell me a little more. That darkish complexion. Ha ha ha, Ramesh. So before taking the name of Ramesh, he brought the image of Ramesh to his mind. Similarly, when you are saying Sita Ram, when you are saying Radhe Sham, you are recalling the Lord. Before that, bring his image to your mind. And now take the name. The mind now has a basis for devotion, for love. Now here people raise some objections. They say, Swamiji, I have never seen God. How will I meditate upon Him? See, God is causelessly merciful. He says, visualize me as you wish. And increase your love. Increase your attachment. That's all that's required. Visualize me as you like. Come to the state of Maam Ekam Sharanam Raja, complete surrender. When you reach that state, I will bestow my grace. And by my grace, when I give that power in your mind, that is called Shuddha Sattva. Not material sattva gun, shuddha sattva. When that is added to the mind, your mind will become divine. And with that divine mind, you will not have to imagine God. You will see Him as He is. When will that happen? 
after god realization when he gives you the power and before that what do you do before that god says don't worry just visualize me as you wish now somebody says swami ji that image of radha krishna in the temple i just love it can i meditate on it sure somebody says that image of shri krishna in the painting in my friend's house is very enchanting can i meditate on it sure but make one correction meditate on the living god in other words let him come out of the image let him come out of the deity the deity is the basis and you bring god out from there he is talking he is walking his hands and feet are moving after all god is not insentient he is supremely sentient so with the basis of the deity basis of the picture you engage in your devotion meditating on the supreme lord in naturality he is coming to me i am coming to him then you will never get bored and if your meditation is that the lord just stands with his four hands holding the shank chakra gada padma and he practically doesn't do anything then you will say god is very boring my little child is more interesting the mind will go there sadhana doesn't have to be boring the lord is the ocean of bliss enliven your sadhana he has all varieties of rasas saukumarya saushilya saurasya rupmadhuri murli madhuri leela madhuri utilize all that so we have done the first step now you have his image in front further you can even meditate upon his past times he is in vrindavan he is playing with his friends i am watching that divine past time see to take the mind to god you utilize his name and the image but that's also not enough the mind wants activity so meditate on his past times the past times of the lord are so enchanting after that meditate on the qualities the virtues of god he is the ocean of bliss he is my eternal father he is my soul beloved bring these qualities to your mind again and again and again and then you can even serve him in the mind there he is i am pressing his feet i am bathing him i am feeding him this is the manasi seva in this way in a natural way you take your mind to god now as a helper for this sadhana there's another thing you can do and what is that that is kirtan chanting take some kirtan sing it with your ears here and with the mind meditate initially when you do meditation you don't get the bliss of god that is why the kirtan is helpful the music the aharo the avro different names different qualities of god they all keep coming they help keep your mind engaged but remember in the kirtan the most important is the remembrance chanting and hearing will help you and when we keep on doing like this this will bring us to a higher state of meditation viraha bhav when will i see him when will the day come when he will manifest here and give his darshan to me in other words now the mind and the senses
which were longing for the world have started longing for God. That is the sign of purification. But the sadhana is not complete. Keep on longing. That longing will result in the heart melting. Now you will feel helpless. I wish to meet him, but I have no means. So seeing yourself as shelterless, you then cry out to him for his grace. Those tears you shed in loving devotion to God, they cleanse the heart of endless lifetimes of dirt. Tears in loving devotion for God will cleanse the mind. But your sadhana is still not complete. Carry on. Until you come to that point which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has described. Yuga yitam nimeshena chakshusha pravrisha yitam shunya yitam jagat sarvam govinda virahena me. He says, now without having darshan of Sri Krishna, the whole world is seeming void. One one moment in waiting has become like an age long and tears are constantly showering from the eyes. That will be the state of Antahkaran Shuddhi, purification of the heart. That is the stage for which God and Guru are waiting. When we prepare our vessel to that point, when we cleanse our heart up to that stage, then we have reached the Maam Ekam Sharanam Vraja, complete surrender. Now God's grace will come, the divine grace that we are seeking. And when that comes, what will happen? Vidyate Ridya Granthesh Chityante Sarva Sanchayak Shiyante Chasya Karmani Tasmin Drishte Paravare. The Shweta Ashvatarupanishad says, Those bonds of Maya, Trigun, they will be cut asunder. The afflictions of the material energy, Tritap, Tridosh, Panchaklesh, Panchukosh, they will all be wiped off. Our karmas, Kshiyante Chasya Karmani, the Sanchit Karmas of endless lifetimes, God will burn them. And Tasmin Drishte Paravare, we will become complete with His love, His bliss and His knowledge. In other words, we will now be united with Him. As long as we live in this body, we will be in the Jeevan Mukta stage. And when we leave this body, we will go to His Divine abode to eternally participate in His Nitya Leela, His Divine Pastimes. So this is the path to happiness. Mm-hmm.